Welcome to the getting started video tutorial for tanks multiplayer. First we are going to import the package from the Unity Asset Store into our project. Then we have to decide which networking solution we want to use. I am going to show both options in this video, Unity Networking and Photon, but you only have to watch the one that's applicable to you. After that we will run two instances of the game in order to test the network connection. If you would like to use additional Unity services in your project such as in-app purchases or ads, you can keep watching for instructions on how to get them running too. Note that these are all optional. I've included quick links in the description of this video so you can also skip to these sections directly. With the asset store opened and tanks multiplayer selected, click on the shiny import button. As this is a complete project that comes with its own project settings for layers and tags, Unity will ask you to overwrite your current settings. Click on the import button again and import all files into your project. You can then close the asset store window. Now let's start with enabling Unity Networking as a networking provider for this project. This can be done right in the editor by opening the services tab. At this point you have to select a Unity project ID for your project. You can either create a new one or select an existing ID in your account and link it with this project. If you scroll down to the multiplayer tab and click on it, you will be presented with a button to accept the Unity Multiplayer Service Terms. Click on that button. Read through the conditions and after you're done with it, press OK. The next screen is asking for a number of maximum players per room. A room is also referred to as match or round, where only a limited amount of players can see each other. In our case we have 4 teams with 3 players each, which makes it 12 players per room. Back in Unity it could be that the multiplayer tab does not refresh automatically. In this case simply go back to the main tab and open the multiplayer tab again. You should then be able to see your current subscription plan and CCU count available. Close the services window. As a last step, we have to tell the tanks multiplayer files to use Unity Networking. Navigate to Window, Tanks Multiplayer, Network Setup. Select the Unity Networking package and press Import. You should now be able to play the game by opening the intro scene. If you decide to go with Photon instead of Unity Networking as a networking provider for this project, start by searching for their Photon Unity Networking package on the Asset Store. You can use their free or paid package if you own that already. Click on the import button and import all files into your project. After the import finishes, an editor window will show up asking for your Photon Cloud credentials. Reason for this is that you need a Photon Cloud app ID for playing over their matchmaking servers. Here you can register a new account or if you already have an account on the Photon dashboard and try to enter your email address, an additional button will show up that sends you straight to their dashboard page. On the real-time page, create a new real-time app for this project. I've already created one, so I'm just going to copy and paste its app ID into the PUN setup window. After clicking Setup Project, the Photon server settings are being displayed in the inspector, but you don't have to do any further changes here. As a next step, you have to tell our scripts to use Photon Networking. You can do this by navigating to Window, Tanks Multiplayer, Network Setup. Select the Photon package and press Import to override the corresponding files. You can now switch to the intro scene for playing the game.
In order to playtest your networking solution and configuration, just build and run an additional instance on your PC. For example, start the match in the Unity editor and join it in your standalone application. While playing, notice how teams, bullets, power-ups and movements are being synchronized across both players. If you want to enable in-app purchases in your game, open the services panel and scroll down to the in-app purchasing section. Press enable to activate the iApp API, then import its plugins into your project. Going back to the main tab, you will see that the Unity Analytics has been enabled automatically too. This is because Unity iApp requires Unity Analytics to be active as well. Close the Services panel and run the game. In the intro scene we have already implemented in-app purchases as you can see. Thing is, you can't really test in-app purchases in the editor as they will always succeed without further notice. Have a look at the iApp product components on these shop items first. They have a checkbox for clearing them for sale with an app store, as well as a unique product identifier. In our game, the free tank should not be purchasable for real money, but the other two tanks are tagged as buyable. So when you are ready for testing on an Android device, for example, you need to create an app in the Google Play Developer Console, create in-app products with these identifiers there, and publish your app as an alpha or a beta. Lastly, navigate to the Services and APIs tab for your unique license key. Copy this key and paste it in the Unity iApp Manager component. You should now be able to test in-app purchases on your device. For a full guide and more advanced in-app purchase implementation supporting virtual currencies and receipt validation, please also have a look at our simple iApp system asset on the Unity Asset Store. Video ads are a great way to earn some money without excessively annoying your users. That's one reason why they are fully implemented in Tanks Multiplayer already. You only have to activate them. To do so, go to the Services panel and open the Ads section. Enable Unity Ads by toggling the switch and check the box for Test Mode. If you log into the Unity Ads dashboard and refresh the page, you should be able to see the newly activated project. Click on the project entry and the respective store entry. Here you can edit advanced properties such as minimum skip delay or switch over to rewarded video ads. That's all you have to do to get video ads working in Tanks Multiplayer. Back in Unity, don't forget to disable test mode once you are ready to go live. This concludes our tutorial on getting started with Tanks Multiplayer. For any questions, please feel free to contact us on the Unity forums or via email. Thanks for watching!